Tim here with Two Feather Survival. I know it's been some time, I haven't had an opportunity to get out and make a video, so that's kind of what I want to do today. The thing that I'd like to start talking about, I've got a new sheath, got a new blade as well. I'm going to show you real quickly. Talk to you a little bit today about how to uh, wear the new sheath that I've designed. It not only has a belt loop, but it also has some snaps that go over a belt, so you can work more of a horizontal pathfinder or a scout type carry. Uh, show you some of the kit that's in that. It also contains the uh, scout dagger and also at the main scout woodsman blade. Not to mention also has a survival kit in there as well. So show you that today. Talk to you about the new knife that I have also made with a new uh, handle material which is made from carbon fiber. Uh, and what we're doing with the, the, the current series of blades and where I'm going to actually start creating some new things. So. That's what's on tap for today. It's a beautiful spring day, and I'm happy to be back out making videos. Stay with me, guys. Okay, so what I have here is a new sheath design that I've made. Make sure I get that into the camera for the the Scout Woodsman knife. Still the same Scout Woodsman. I haven't done any changes to that. I've changed some of the tempering to the steel. And I'll talk to you about that in a second. But this sheath offers pretty much what I thought was the my one go-to knife. If I had to have just a few seconds to grab something from uh, either a vehicle or a four-wheeler or a boat or canoe, whatever the case is, I wanted my one go-to knife. And, and this pretty much has wound up being that design. Um, later in April, we're going to be going to North Carolina, way up in the mountains, and I'm going to be doing a lot with this knife. I'm also going to start a knife skills video and go over some of the basic bushcrafting things with knives, um, teach you a little bit of how, how to sharpen the knives, how to care for your blade. It is high carbon, so we do have to remember to keep them well oiled and make sure that they're not getting any rust. Uh, and also to teach some of the basic carving techniques. So those are some of the things that, that's, that's coming with this. Let me reposition the camera. I'm going to break this sheath down for you, show you what's in it, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay guys, so this is the sheath here, made from a very high grade tooling leather. Uh, I do have paracord tie down straps on the bottom, uh, which is lashed in here through the eyelets. There's a front pouch on the sheath as well. This you can hold some basic survival items with you, fish hooks, uh, some way to make fire, some char material if you want that, um, some basic meds. Uh, one of the things out of the research I've been doing lately is the discussion of basic medication to have with you. The thing that you don't want to have if you're out in the woods and, and lost is obviously pain could be a number one issue. Could be that I have some sort of a, a, a tummy bug or I've just eaten something that's not agreeing with me and now I have all day uh, laid up with a, 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 a bad stomach and, uh, virus or infection or a parasite or whatever the case is. So some basic medications to have in this type of a kit would be very handy to have. Don't need anything long term. Remember, we're keeping in mind 72 hours, three to four days, hopefully tops, and then you can either self rescue or somebody will then found you. Three days is usually the magic number with that. The other thing that you could have in there is uh, some basic water carrying device, um, basic water purification tablets, those type of things are things that we need to keep in mind for something like this. The ability to gain protein is good. Fish hooks are very easy to carry. Also, uh, some small. Uh, Fish amount of fishing line, maybe a small lure, whatever it is that you choose to keep inside your tin is going to be up to you and also going to be dependent on your environment and your situation and the time of year that you have uh, to deal with and also the, uh, the knowledge that you have in your brain itself. So that's kind of the first idea there. The other thing I've added in on the side is a ferro rod loop and the rod that I've chosen that I'd seem to really like is the Habilis. This is made by Fire Rod, Exotech Fire Rod, and also Habilis have kind of gone in on a joint venture project. There you see the Habilis logo, cool logo, I like it. They did a great job with that. I like the where their mindset was with that. And on the back side, the Exotech Fire Rod logo. The thing that I like most about this is not only do I have a fire rod, but also in the cap, take this off for you. I've got a place to secure some some dry tinder. 
that's very handy to have. If I've got some instant readily accessible dry tinder, the better off I'm going to be in a situation if all of a sudden I'm lost. There is a rubber gasket here, so that should stay dry. I'm going to test this a little bit more thoroughly when we get to the mountains. And the other thing that I like, the body's aluminum. The rod itself is actually threaded. So you can remove that, change that if you need to. Don't know whenever you'd use up a, a rod this thick, but you just may if you're if you're out practicing a lot and use, utilizing your skills. The other neat thing that I like, this is a three inch rod. You can also get a five inch rod uh, and thread that back into the, the main body. I like that feature. That gives you a little bit more of a, a rod striking surface to go with and that way too, if I'm pressed on space, I can use a small one. If I have the space or I have a loop like I've included on the sheath here, then I can get the larger rod, thread that in, and that actually gives me more of a substantial uh, piece of material to cast spark from. So that's the Exotech Fire Rod. They're not much. I think I've gotten this one off from eBay for like maybe 25 bucks, 20, 25 bucks, something like that. It's been a while, I can't remember. But it's I'm very, very happy with this, and, and I've wanted to include it into a sheath for a while now, so that's why I went with this. Got a, a hair. Uh, barrette from the store the other day. It's elastic. It's a nice heavy piece of elastic. That way when you put through the, the fire or the, the loop on the sheath, all you got to do is take this, double this back on itself, and then with the loop there, it gives a point to kind of grab and now it won't go anywhere. So again, that's something that I wanted to have incorporated to make sure I've got some sort of a positive locking device since the rod is on the outside. Now even though that you're doing this, I would strongly recommend inside the kit have some backup method of fire be it waterproof matches small lighter whatever the case is have some other sort of a backup fire so I'm gonna set that aside <clears throat> going down further I'm gonna talk about this like these things not that I like the tobacco product not a big fan of that at all but I like these as far as containers go uh, a lot of these small tins you can get they actually have got a rubber seal on them usually inside the cap here I've got a friend that actually supplies me with these uh, again I am not at any stretch of the imagination um, saying tobacco is a good thing I don't like tobacco at all I'm deadly set against it uh, my own reasons are personal to me but if you are a tobacco user so be it I'm not here trying to change you however I do like these tins it's small enough that I can keep enough into it it closes well and it does have a waterproof seal to it the thing that I would add I don't have anything in this tin right now I'm going to talk about what to put in this in a different video but you can also then take a piece of tape secure the tape around the outside of this gives me a water a better waterproof seal and also the tape is something that I can use should I need to but this is the next piece that's kind of in our, our little travels here this part actually if you undo the snaps comes off so now I don't have to have the tin on the knife sheath if I do not want it on. This is something I can just take off, put it aside, put it in my backpack, um, put it in my pocket, wherever the case is, but I don't have to have this on the knife sheath. So we're going to set that aside. You take those snaps off, you'll notice that the length of paracord is here. I keep this length of paracord is about 25 feet long. It's 550 paracord. It is seven strands, so I've also got the seven interior strands as well, which is a good thing to have. I can use that for hafting uh, spear points, hafting arrowheads. I can use that as a heavy gauge bank line if I've included into the, the tin some sort of uh, fishing hook. Uh, and again, I'm going to talk about that at a different video. Now you get a better view down here of the tie down for the leg. You can also use this to secure other items to the front of the sheath if you need to. That's completely up to you as to what you're wanting to do. The idea of these straps, everybody wants to know why they're there. And you see how they're tied into the back of the sheath. The idea here is if I were to take this and put this on my belt and run my belt through this way, I can then bring these straps back around, button them, which now secures my knife to a belt in a horizontal fashion. People tend to call that a scout carry if the, if the belt's coming through this way. 
I like that for a few different reasons. I'm going to add that in on a, a separate video when we start talking about knife skills and carrying of knives. I like that for a few reasons. One, I think it gives a little bit more positive um, retention to your body. Also, I like the way that you can draw from more of a concealed type of a, of a, a carry system. Not that I'm saying that I want to have people running around with a knife on them always in, in, in just average day society, but out in the woods, it's a neat carry system. It has a lot of pluses to that type of a carry system. Uh, it's something that I'm going to start really exploring with this knife and, and the other knives that I'm offering. Um, and, and we'll see that again in another video. Here you get a better look at the ferro rod loop. Nice thing about this, the where I mounted the loop in also provides a bit of a vent hole for the sheath to let moisture wick out of the sheath. That way you're not putting your sheath in. The, if you've fallen in the water, uh, the entire sheath is all wet on the inside. Putting that in kind of puts a cork basically on the bottle and all that would still continue to stay wet in there. You don't want that. So this is allowing venting from the interior of the sheath. So I'm going to break this down a little bit further. This piece actually comes off. So here is just the um, ability to give you a horizontal knife carry and also this gives you the ability to take all of this to include the cordage and now I can put this in a pack or on a belt or whatever the case is as one separate unit. Again it gives me additional ways and additional means of carrying my items, breaking the kit down further. You notice there's loop lashing points here on the bottom. There's a few more back through here. That way I can tie all this together, hang it around my neck, and that lightens the load from the, the main kit. So this is an entirely a modular system. I designed it that way to be modular and to allow you to change this out as different seasons need to see fit, as what you think you need for your day of, uh, of exploring the woods or hunting or fishing, whatever the case is, you can change all this out. So now I've got an entirely separate piece of kit, and again, this can go on my belt via the, the same straps, and I can keep that on a belt. Gives me more of an option that way. Let's get all, rid of all that. I'm going to set that aside. The last piece that's in here, get it out of the sheath here, is a scout dagger. It's a little bit tight just because the leather is uh, is um, pretty new. I haven't had a chance to stretch all this out yet. I've got a scout dagger. Great thing to have. Um, I can use this as a secondary blade, as a backup blade. I can use this for digging up roots, whatever the case is. I can also use this for cutting, but more importantly, I can find a, a stick about six feet long, haft this to the stick, and now I've got a makeshift medium-sized game hunting weapon or a personal defense weapon, whichever the case is, whatever you see fit out in the woods. Again, this is the same scout dagger that we've had before, 1095 high carbon steel. It's been bead blasted and then the edge is pulled back out after that. Uh, but a good, good strong blade. We'll set that aside. Now we're down to the, the meat and potatoes of the, the basic sheath kit here. Uh, again, all the leather work is still the same. I've got Chicago screws holding the, the knife uh, leather closed. It is a clamshell design. As you see, there's no seam here on the back, on the, on the spine of the sheath. But as you see here, we start including the, the, uh, uh, where the two pieces meet together. You see that there's three pieces in there. There is a, uh, a bit of a space here and something for the blade to ride against. I didn't want it just riding against the, the metal work here on the front when you draw the knife from the sheath but it is riding against a large piece of leather which comes up into here and that gives a more positive control of the blade and also keeps the blade further protected so you get a nice easy draw so I'm gonna set this aside basic scout woodsman put that right there for a minute the sheath, the, the belt loop, um, got about two and a half inches of belt loop space here. This also is secured to the, the main body of the sheath with two Chicago screws uh, and then it's stitched on the back side here. 
the leg tie down portion. You can also go up to the main belt, tie that over your belt. That way, should any of this break off of your belt, and now you've potentially could have lost your blade, it's still going to be there because it's now being secured by the the leg tie down strap or sash or whatever you choose to call this. All the same idea. So this is the new Scout Woodsman knife sheath. These are going to be up on the website soon. You can go to www.twofeathersurvival.com and check the prices of these and the color options, all that type of stuff. We can customize this pretty much any way that you're looking to have this done. I can get in that color of leather or dye it the specific colors that you're looking for. Paracord, I can do all that in whatever color it's coming in now, which is pretty much the color of the rainbows. Um, some have opted to do this with blaze orange or a bright lime green. That way, should they drop any of this or to include dropping their knife, they've got a piece of brightly colored paracord to go find their knife with. You also see here on the bit of tie down portion or the bit of the strapping here off the back of the Scout Woodsman, I've included some beads. You can use this as a shortened modified pace counter if you know how to do that. You can just shorten up your distances and change your timing for a four bead counter versus the more traditional nine and five bead counters. So uh, something else to consider. Gives you a nice little point to grab from here. Put that around the wrist. I can then tie this in just by rotating around and this now gives me a point to choke up on the knife to use more as in a chopping action as I get further back on the knife blade itself. The point with this is should I slip the blade is just going to fall out of the way and not go shooting out of my hands and cut myself or a buddy or whatever the case is that may be standing in a close proximity or behind me. Uh, we're going to talk about more of knife handling skills in a separate video. I don't want to get into that too much right now, but we're going to do that here in, in just a bit. So, those are the new Scout Woodsman designs. The other thing that I've done is I now have, again, this is just the basic Scout Woodsman. Same blade design, same steel, still 1095 high carbon. Nothing has changed here. Pulling the edge back out. But I have added in a carbon fiber handle and rubber grip on the back side so you get more of a uh, positive grip on this, something else to grip into. It's got a great feel on the handle, it gives you a lot of good control. The other thing I've been doing recently is I've been making sure that the tips of these are getting hardened very well. So if I need to egress from a vehicle, I can rend that back into the glass shattering the glass to get out of a vehicle. With the finger choil that's here, I get a good grip on that and I don't have to worry about slipping off and slipping my hand down the blade. The other thing I can do is take the strap from the back, wrap that around my hand, tie it in like I just showed you, making sure I've got a good positive grip on that so again my hand doesn't slip down and go across the blade. The rubber grip that's in this really helps out with that a lot, especially if you were in a hot environment and a sweaty environment, I can get a good purchase on this to make sure I can use that as a, as a ramming tool. So this is another option that the Scout Woodsman is going to be coming in. It's got a, a black finish to it, again the carbon fiber handles and it is polished to a, a high sheen, I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up or not. So something new for the Scout Woodsman. I'll give you a little shot there so you can see the, uh, the rubber inlays there. And again, this has just been a, a great, great knife. So that's what we have new with the Scout series. The daggers I'm also doing now as well. This is the longer version, the large uh, dagger. This is also in a uh, black finish powder coated blade. And then the edges pulled back out from that as well. Haven't had any problems on either one of those, and they've just been great, great blades. All right, guys, that's kind of a quick video for today. Um, like I said, I've got more planned. I've got a lot of knife skills videos planned. I think the other thing I'm going to do with the knife skills videos, some of you know I've been involved in martial arts now for, for quite a few years. 
uh, specifically with the Bujinkan system founded by Soke Masaki Hatsumi from Japan. Uh, there's a lot of skills that are within those schools that I think I'm going to start sharing with you guys as far as these type of tools are concerned. Knives and things that you can do with knives. A knife is so important to have with you. Whether you are hunting, whether you are just doing an everyday thing, you never ever know when you might have uh, your life may be put in jeopardy. Not that I'm wanting you guys to go involved in a, get involved in a bunch of knife fighting stuff. If you have an opportunity, you should always run because once a knife fight starts, somebody will get cut. You are probably going to get cut. Any of my students that I teach for knife fighting, that's the first thing that I tell them. Get ready to get cut. If you're going to try to take a blade from somebody, you're going to get cut. No two ways about it. Get that out of your mind. Get it aside. Get ready for that to happen. That way it isn't a shock if and when it does happen. And more likely than not will happen. Knife fighting is very fast, very evil, uh, very bloody, real quick. So I'm going to start showing some basic techniques for that. The basic bushcrafting wood skills techniques that I'm going to also start showing are going to show you how the, uh, the new Scout Woodsman sheath is carried, different things that you can do with that, and different ways to use the contents of that, um, and also different cuts that you can make with a knife. How to baton, how to do a chest lever cut, how to brace the, the blade against your knee to then use that as a stable point to start bringing off large portions of, of wood to make shelters, to make traps, all that kind of stuff is coming. I'm uh, going to start doing some of that just as quick as I can. Got some days off and I'm really looking forward to that. So again, great to be back with you. Uh, it's been a while, I know. We've had some horrible weather here, which isn't an excuse, but it's kind of what happened. Life kind of caught up with me, and now I'm going to get back into doing this stuff because I enjoy it, and I enjoy having the ability to share my knowledge with y'all. So till then, thank you for watching, and enjoy your day. And again, thank you for everything that you do for myself and my family and Two Feather Survival. Have a great day, y'all. Bye.